This is Peter Stewart. I'm here in Inglewood, Colorado, and I'm the owner of Sterling Builders. This is the first ever certified multifamily passive house in the state of Colorado, and we are directly abutting 285, which is a six-lane state highway. You can hear as we pin this door shut, the noise level goes way down. We've got these Alpen triple pane uh, windows, and we've got a very airtight building envelope, mostly to keep down the sound from 285. So this is Sterling Builder's first ever multifamily unit, and it is also our first ever certified passive house, and we would not have been able to do it on our own. Um, we work a lot with human building systems. We work with shape architecture. We also have a wonderful crew of uh, subcontractors we work with, Temple Brothers Plumbing, Electron Power, and CMS for all of our mechanical systems. So as you walk into this building here, uh, we wanted to make sure when we built this that we were not only being passive certified, but we were also matching the quality. So the, just the standard quality of construction to the level of passive house that we were getting at. So all of the um, countertops in here, this is a level six um, Piranha White Dolomite. It's a stone shipped in from Brazil. I think that it's one of the common misconceptions is that to be energy efficient, you also have to be boring. Um, I have nothing against a Prius, but uh, sometimes Priuses are a little lackluster and lack excitement. Um, what we tried to show here was that you can have performance, you can have green, and you can also have something that is super fun to look at. You know, we have all the Rizzo fixtures, we've got a Bertazzoni Italian range there, um, and there's absolutely no reason why having a high performance, energy efficient house has to make it look like a Prius. Here on this uh, multifamily unit that we have, we have three different wall assemblies. Our first wall assembly is a rain screen on the east and west sides. We have thermally modified ash, which is a thermary product on the outside. That sits on top of our three quarter inch battens. And then we have a front to quattro membrane behind that. Inside that, we also have two inches of EPS foam with a zip membrane behind it. On our north and south sides of the building, we have that same starting from the inside out. We have our zip membrane. We have two inches of EPS foam. We have vertical battens that we put on it, and then we immediately have metal uh, standing seam uh, siding, which follows up onto our roof. Then our roof assemblies are slightly different. So on our roof, we have an unvented cathedral ceiling. So we have uh, our standing seam metal roof, which is sitting directly on top of the Grace Ice and Water Shield, standard roofing membrane, three-quarter plywood. We have open web trusses, scissor trusses that are on the roof, and we have about R80 of dense pack fiberglass. And then in the interior of that, we have our Intello membrane and then a three and a half inch service cap. So to make this building work, we worked with EMU Building Science in order to model all these different systems so that they worked independently of one another. As you look at the deck below you, we actually have R38, which most builders would think, hey, you can't put R38 in the ceiling. It's the ceiling to the primary bedroom. We have R82 in the cathedral ceilings. And what we did is we averaged out across the whole building to get building performance that was far exceeding the standard building. Perfect, so we're coming in from outside. We're walking into our uh, party room on the third floor here. And we are directly underneath our Landlocks FE skylight. The skylight was uh, shipped in from Europe. And there's a very important distinction between this and most American skylights. This is a triple pane skylight. I think we have high solar beams on it as well. And it's got a U value of 0.1. So that's looking at an R value uh, of about 10. Standard skylight in America is going to have an R value between 2 and 3, uh, and it's going to lose a ton of energy. It's not necessary in a regular house to have a skylight that has an R value of 10, but in this building structure with R82 in our ceiling, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to have R82 here and R2 here. So it's very important to us to get air tightness and to get a good U value out of it. So one of the interesting details we ran into making this uh, multifamily certified passive house is that we had a firewall in the middle. We um, talked to a lot of different people and everybody said this was going to be one of our main issues was air sealing this firewall. What we did to sort of jump completely over that is we air sealed over the top of our firewall. We were able to use um, 
Tescon tape and Viscon fiber to air seal directly over the top of our firewall and then, and then seal, air seal this building as one unit. So we don't care about air leakage between the buildings because both buildings are similar in temperature and similar in humidity levels. Um, and that is going to stop, so much sound is already stopped from our insulation and from two inches of drywall. That all we cared about was air sealing. So what we did is we went right up over the top of it. We took our uh, air seal membrane, our air barrier, from the inside uh, of our trusses here. We went over that firewall and then back to the inside of the trusses on the other side. I think um, my favorite part about it is that we were able to provide this very simple box that is filled up with some very complex things. A lot of times when you have a, a building this complex, it looks this complex. And we really wanted to make sure that we were going to simplify the outer shell and the inner shell so that a homeowner can have the experience of living in a clean, sleek, modern house with all of those modern companies.